Hey guys, welcome to the 14. I'm Nick Cole, and we're breaking down each of the SEC Week 6 football games from a betting perspective. Today, we're talking about the Vanderbilt Commodores visiting the number 20 Florida Gators on Saturday at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, a.k.a. the Swamp. This game is going to kick off at noon Eastern time, and it's going to be televised on the SEC Network. From a betting perspective, this game opened as the Gators were a 35-point favorite, and it's moved in the days following. As of this recording, uh, Florida's favored by 38 and a half. The over-under on this game also seen a little bit of movement. It opened at 63 and a half on Sunday and is down to 59 and a half. I'm going to bring in our betting analyst, Christopher Smith. Christopher, what do you make of this lopsided SEC East uh, matchup? Yeah, Nick, I want to know, uh, we'll find out later in this show, but I want to know if you're going to make it six straight fades. I mean, you're a Nashville area resident, a former beat writer, and you may have even uh, followed Vandy down to the state of Florida, judging by your background this week. So uh, I'm curious to see if you're going to you're gonna fade the doors yet another time. But uh, first, why don't we get into the weather injuries and then get into the next news and notes. Yeah, you caught me with my surfing decor in the background. I, I fled the state of Tennessee um, after such a bad week for me and picks. I think I was six and 10 and, and you were much better than me and have taken a commanding lead. So I'm down out of state trying to regroup. Commodores and I are both looking for uh, maybe an upset victory in week six. And mine in this head to head competition, there's against the Gators, right? Um, from a weather standpoint in Gainesville on Saturday, this uh, temperature should be in the low 80s sticking up towards the high for the day as the game goes along with that noon kick. Uh, weather, rain, we got about 15% chance, uh, so nothing too crazy there. And then wind, about six to seven miles per hour, again, within the parameters of acceptability. Uh, on the injuries front, let's start with Florida first. Defensive back, uh, Kyer Elam, uh, probably won't play. I don't know, it may be best to call it questionable. He may or may not play against Vandy this week. They may not need him to play, honestly, if they can let him get healthy. And then Vandy starting center, uh, Michael Warden, uh, played a lot early on in the season, but it's been battling an ankle injury and only played a couple of snaps against UConn. And so wondering if he's going to be near full strength for this one, we'll have to find out uh, on Saturday. Here's a note uh, wise on this one. When you're favored by 38 and a half points, this is less about whether Florida can beat Vandy. Of course, we know Florida probably an overwhelming favorite to win this game outright. On the Vandy side of things, I'd just like to point out, hey, Vandy won a game last week. You know, we, we rang on Vanderbilt, and, and obviously they were winless last year, and Clark Lee got off to a rough start. The fact that they came from behind in both of those games and found a way to win is a piece of the building block for Clark Lee as he tries to reestablish an identity for this Vanderbilt program that has hit rock bottom. It hit rock bottom late in 2020, uh, and he's sort of picking up the pieces. And, yeah, that first game was ugly. But maybe we see some progress from this team uh, as the season moves on, which, again, when you look at a line, it's 38 and a half. May make a difference if they if they get a little bit better and a little bit better as the season has gone along. So, Christopher, do you, what do you think about this game from a betting standpoint? You know, looking a little further, Florida doesn't have a good passing game. They haven't had a good passing game all season. So they're very reliant on running the ball. And Kentucky is very, very good um, at preventing big plays. Um, I think Kentucky is number one in the country, actually, uh, only giving up seven plays of 20 plus yards. So it, it shouldn't be necessarily all that shocking looking back that Florida wasn't going to have a lot of explosive plays. They weren't going to throw the ball well. So it might be a little bit more of a grinded out game for them. But, um, you know, you're going from the number one team and the uh, number one defense in the country at preventing big plays in Kentucky to the 128th ranked team at preventing big plays in Vanderbilt, who has given up 36 plays of 20 yards or more. So that's going to really, really help Florida and make the game a little bit more fun for the Gators, who definitely have some frustration to take out after the way their season's gone the last few weeks. And, you know, um, on the Vanderbilt side, uh, you know, I'm looking at this from a betting standpoint as opposed to looking at the fan base. And I cannot endorse what they did against UConn as a, necessarily a positive sign for Vanderbilt. I mean, uh, win-loss is one thing, but I'm looking at how good a team is and what the stats say regardless of the outcome of the game. And UConn rushed for 192 yards on 5.2 yards per carry last week. Now, this is a UConn team – since 2017, that's four years ago, 
They've won three games, Rhode Island, Wagner, and UMass. And that was a uh, UMass team a few years ago. That was just horrible as well. So this is a team that's ranked 130th in S&P Plus, And it could be the worst SEC team in my lifetime, Vanderbilt, this season. So, I mean, yes, they won. But I think it actually – I actually lowered Vanderbilt in my power rankings after last week's game. And so uh, now we have Florida. And they're playing on the road against a Gators team that's very good at running the ball. So I guess we'll find out how that goes for them. But uh, Nick, the the talking is over. Now it's time to to put up or shut up. Tell me, are you going to fade Vanderbilt for the sixth time, or are you finally back in the doors? In this game, I'm not sure that this is a bet on Vanderbilt at, as much as it is on the amount of points that we're asking Florida to lay here. I think Florida wins this game very easily. Don't get me wrong. This is not a game that I expect Vanderbilt to be especially competitive in. Florida's better in every facet of the game, pretty much. So what I wonder about, though, in in the process of a game that I feel like they're going to get up in early and they're going to take care of business at home, is at what point does Dan Mullen say, you know what, it's not worth pressing any further. We're a team that just got done playing Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, and we've got more big games left on the schedule do we really need to press the issue here with Vanderbilt while we're up big and up big early? So for that reason, I'm going to take Vanderbilt plus 38 and a half under the assumption that the, the Gators may have this game in hand early and the Commodores may be building on a little bit of stuff offensively, maybe can get a couple of touchdowns here. And I also like the over in this game, 59 and a half, just because like I said, I, I, you've pointed out all the reasons that Vanderbilt is, extremely bad on defense and there's no reason that the Gators can't get most of the way there themselves it's just a matter to me of how much they pull off the pedal and and maybe Vanderbilt scores a few more points to help push us over the over so give me Vanderbilt plus 38 and a half and over 59 and a half what are you thinking well I gotta disagree with you on one thing and that's what will Dan Mullen do when he has a big lead late and part of that is if you're a Florida fan out there I'm sure you've been yelling at your tv Where's Anthony Richardson? I know he's healthier. Where is he? And I think, especially against Vanderbilt's defense, he may be more dangerous as a player than Emory Jones. And what is a more perfect situation to finally get Anthony Richardson some snaps than in the second half against Vanderbilt? And if you look at the rest of the season, I would not be surprised if there's at least some consideration. I'm not saying Florida would fire Dan Mullen, But is Dan Mullen uh, wanting to be in Gainesville? And I think one of the things that Dan Mullen needs to figure out if he is going to sort of consider that is who is Anthony Richardson and what does he have? Is that a guy he wants to coach in Gainesville for the next few years? And so uh, the other thing that I think is sort of hilarious is you look at the total and you look at the side, right? And often there's some level of correlation and Florida opened minus 35. Now they're minus 38 and a half. So the total opened 63 and a half. You think Florida, you know, the, the spread went up to, from 35 to 38 and a half. You think, oh, well, odd makers, the market is saying Florida is going to score more points, right? Well, what happened to the total? It went from 63 and a half to 59 and a half. So it's crazy to me that th- those two things happen at, at, at the same time. And to me, the market is screaming Vanderbilt is definitely this bad. Not only is Florida going to score enough to cover 38 and a half? Um, but Vanderbilt's going to score so little that we have to move the total down four points as we're moving the spread up three and a half points. So uh, I'm not going to go against uh, the tea leaves on this one. I'm taking Florida minus 38 and a half. I will go over 59 and a half. That's going against the market, but I think Florida may get close to that number themselves. So we'll see how it turns out, Nick. I'll see if you're if your uh, new location uh, and your your new take on Vanderbilt from a betting standpoint pays off for you. But uh, for Nick Cole, I'm Christopher Smith for the 14, and we'll talk to you soon.